Good morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Ryan Fleener, and as the rector here at St. Luke's Parish in Darien, it's a great joy and privilege to be able to welcome you to worship this morning on this Sunday after the Epiphany. This Sunday is also the Sunday of our annual meeting, and I hope that members of the parish will join us immediately following this service at 1115 on Zoom as we celebrate the year past and look forward to the year to come. So as we prepare our hearts to worship God this day, let us stand and sing that great hymn, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time, grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again, see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, 
and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols. So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I might not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you. of God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life and whose service is perfect freedom. Amen. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. In trying to explain this story to our youngest members in this week's children's video, hoping to get them to understand just what Jesus' authority might have felt and looked like to those around him, I asked the kids to imagine that they were on their front lawn with their mom or dad, who was teaching them how to throw a football, 
how to take their elbow back, how to let, make sure the ball rolls off the tips of their fingers. And then I said, now imagine that Tom Brady walks into your front yard. Here, give me the ball. This is how you throw a football. Well, in the world of football, Tom Brady has authority. At least to Patriots fans. Jesus' authority, I went on to say, extends far beyond football to everything. Now, I won't preach my, to you my children's homily, but as, long, but as we here this morning look more deeply and more grown-uply at the text and its meaning, I do want you to keep in your mind and in your body that childlike, wow, that holy moly, who is this guy? He speaks with authority. It's interesting that the word authority is set against scribes. Jesus taught as one having authority and not as the scribes. We hear clearly in the word authority, the word author, someone who writes something into existence, someone who creates. And we know Jesus as the author of our salvation. And while scribes in this passage refers to teachers, the learned of that community of, at the synagogue, the word holds for us the idea of taking down the thoughts of another. Scribes, scribes don't create, they copy, they transcribe, they interpret. They do what I'm trying to do this morning. So we have, in a very real sense, a meeting here of the creator and the created, the light and its reflection, the ground zero and everything else. Now, just to go all non-children's homily on you, I want to dig a little deeper into that linguistic hole. Because the word which our Bible translates as authority, here in this passage from Mark, is the Greek word ekousia. And that same Greek word, ekousia, appears in today's passage from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. Now, if all of you were here sitting in your pews like you're supposed to be, I could ask you to look at your passage and guess which word that is. But I will tell you that there, in our Revised Standard Version that we heard read this morning, that Greek word, akousia, which has just been authority for Jesus, is here translated liberty. Take care that this liberty of yours does not become a stumbling block to the weak. In the New International Version, it's translated as exercise of your rights. Be careful that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. And in the Message Bible, it's translated freedom. Paul there admonishes his listeners not to use your freedom carelessly in a way that leads a fellow believer to be thrown off track. So authority is intertwined with liberty, rights, freedom. What do we do with this very multivalent word this morning? We cannot, as mortal beings in a broken world, always author our situations. That is an ecousia, an authority that belongs to God alone. But we can author our responses, our attitudes, our outlooks. We are free, we have ecousia, to choose the good, to orient towards hope, to submit to God's authority. And we are enjoined to use that liberty, to use our ecousia in the service and for the good of others. So while God's ecousia, 
and I pray I'm pronouncing my Greek properly, is the final word. Our lesser akousia offers us akousia to bring akousia to all. Crazy. Our authority gives us liberty to bring freedom to all. It reminds me, and this is really for Silas, it reminds me of a funny exchange of a television show that we've been watching recently, Ted Lasso, entirely winning, very joyful, about an American football coach who's hired to coach a British soccer team. Lasso's having trouble getting down the British lingo and says to his co-coach, his colleague, so if I were to get fired, from my job where I'm putting cleats in the trunk of my car, and his colleague says, yep, you'd get the boot for putting boots in the boot. That's what we have here. Acousia, 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 right? We have the acousia to use our acousia to bring acousia to others. We have our authority, gives us our liberty to bring freedom to all. So how do we do that? Well, after the events of 9-11, for example, we understand, stood, that we have, that we had, sorry, that we, and continue, but we had to give up a bit of our freedom to ensure public safety. And so we learned to take off our shoes and our belts, to place our laptops in a separate bin as we travel through airports. We grumble a bit, we apply for TSA pre-check, but we accede to this call on our liberty because it protects the community. And likewise, during this COVID pandemic, we have been similarly asked to forego individual liberties, freedoms, authorities in the name of public safety. We wear masks, we maintain distance, we eat outside, we take our schools, our meetings, and even our church services online. We grumble a bit, I certainly do, but we do it because it protects our community. In reading some commentaries on today's passage, today's passage, Paul's passage, his letter to the Corinthians, trying to really understand just what was happening in that community at the time, I found a line by Luther Seminary professor Arlen Hultgren that I really liked. Hultgren said that, to relinquish one's freedom is not to lose it. It is one way of using it. I think that's a helpful reframe and a good question to ask ourselves. How are we using our freedoms and our authority? Are we using it for the betterment and the building up of our communities? Paul begins his exhortation by telling his readers that knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. The knowledge Paul refers to isn't your basic 2 plus 2 equals 4 kind of knowledge. Paul means the kind of knowledge that one wields like a weapon or lords over another. Knowledge that is really in service only to the knower and to no one else. That kind of knowledge simply puffs up. The issue in today's story is this, that meat, once sacrificed to pagan idols, would later be sold in the marketplaces. Could a believer, a follower of Jesus, eat it? For some, and Paul would be included among these, because they had knowledge that there was only one God, eating this meat was a matter of indifference. They could or they could not. It was just meat. But out of love, out of care for those not yet there in their belief, in order not to confuse them or send mixed signals, in order not to be a stumbling block, Paul suggested believers should abstain. They should use their acousia to protect others, to build up, not trip up. Here at St. Luke's, in this church beside the sound, the quote from David Anderson's parish hymn, 
We want to be one for another, not stumbling blocks, but building blocks. Building blocks that we might, all of us, and individually and collectively, become a living temple for our God. A place and a people who use our freedoms, our authority, our knowledge, our love for the building up of one another. On this annual meeting Sunday, when we gather to thank our outgoing vestry members, Judy Barnett, Jim Bragg, Callie Hulick, and our indomitable senior warden, Mark Campbell, Mark who has held us together like true mortar across many anxious seasons, not just COVID, on this Sunday, we celebrate the ways we have been that people and that place. A church that knows how to use these things because we know that we are a people under God's authority, under Christ's banner, filled with the Holy Spirit. And that knowledge invites us into a peace, into the peace of God, which passes all understanding, into the joy of the Lord that is our strength, and into a hope that does not disappoint I hope you will join us on Zoom immediately following this service at our annual meeting where we'll continue to welcome new members, welcome a new senior warden, and consider the ways that we can keep building. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Your 
Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. We pray for our outreach partner in Spirica and Stamford. We pray for everyone on our parish intercession list. Today, we pray especially for Morgan, Pamelia, Paul, Pat, and Cassie. And we commend to God's care and keeping Christine Shim, who died this past week. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another sign of Christ's peace. Please be seated. Again, it is a joy and privilege to be able to welcome you to worship on this, this Sunday, this Sunday of our annual meeting. And if you're new, we're especially glad that you have joined us and I hope you'll reach out and be in touch so we can welcome you into the life we share in Christ here at St. Luke's. A few words of announcements. Today, immediately following the service, we do have our annual meeting on Zoom. The link for that is in our weekly e-news or also at stlukesdarianorg slash annual meeting if you'd like to join us, we hope you will. And then from noon until one o'clock, there's an opportunity to receive communion here in the church. So if you would like to receive the sacrament this day, we hope you will come for that too. This week on Tuesday, February 2nd, we celebrate the Feast of Candlemas, 40 days after Christmas, uh, with an outdoor service around a bonfire for the blessing of candles and lighting up this campus with the light of Christ. We know that there's some weather coming our way over the next few days, so we'll be in touch Tuesday morning if we need to cancel or postpone that service, but we do hope we'll be able to gather to celebrate together. This season of Epiphany is fast coming to an end, uh, on February 17th, we will observe Ash Wednesday together, and with that, the beginning of the season of Lent. A note about worship on Ash Wednesday and in Lent. We will be beginning, again, our gathering together outdoors. On Ash Wednesday, we'll have outdoor worship at 9 a.m., 
noon and 4 o'clock with a live stream service here from the church at 7 p.m. And then beginning on the first Sunday in Lent, we will begin having an outdoor Sunday service at 9 a.m. immediately before this 10 a.m. live stream. It has been hard, as Susan said in her sermon, it has been hard to be a part for love's sake. And as we continue through this COVID-19 pandemic and are still unable to gather here together in the church, it will be good to be able to be together outdoors. So as we continue our worship this day, under the authority of God and receiving the sacrament of his love and his grace. Let your lights so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Luke, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. In union, dear God, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you myself, my soul, and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. 
And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I tie myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live now and forever in your love. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.